in a series in Romans, and we've been doing this since like we started back in November. We've got to chapter 12, and we're going to spend uh, today, Pastor Austin, this morning, if you were here this morning, incredible time of ministry that we shared this morning, uh, and uh, so thankful for, for, um, for Pastor Austin bringing that word to us. And so we're going to spend tonight and next Sunday in Romans 12. It's kind of like a series within a series. And uh, Romans 12 is, is just packed with some great, great stuff for us in our life, living uh, as disciples of Jesus, following him. I, I, I believe we could spend 12 weeks in chapter 12, but we're not going to do that. So if you have your Bibles and turn to Romans chapter 12, I just want to ask, uh, when you came in tonight, I caught, or my wife Jeannie caught you, and, uh, and we had a little basket with some puzzle pieces. How many did not get a puzzle piece when you came in? All right, Pastor Brian, can you help me with this? There's a basket right here. This is just vitally important that everyone would get one of these, okay? So if you, if you didn't get one when you came in, just raise your hand. Jeannie's got a basket. Pastor Brian's got a basket. Uh, if you're online, just reach up there to the TV, and uh, it, it, we'll see if one can just come through the screen to you. I don't know if, that'll, if that will happen, but uh, just hold on to that. We'll make a little bit of illustration with that in, in, uh, in just a moment, but... I want, to take, I want to take a moment to just read, read these verses for you. We're going to go through verse 8 tonight, and I'm going to start back at Romans 12, 1, what Pastor Austin read this morning, and read through uh, verse 8. Got to be in the right book, not 1 Corinthians 12. All right. So just keep your hand up. They're going to, they're going to get those to you. Thank you for being patient with that. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all that he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind that he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. The way to worship God is for our lives to be that living sacrifice. If you missed the message this morning, go back, watch that online. Our lives laid on the altar, offering ourselves to God for whatever he uh, wants to do in and through us to shape us and make us who he wants us to be. Verse 2 says, don't copy the behavior and patterns and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way that you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. And verse 3, we'll move on. Because of the privilege and authority God has given me, I give each of you this warning. This is Paul speaking to the Roman church. Don't think you are better than you really are. Be honest in your evaluation of yourselves, measuring yourselves by the faith that God has given us. Just as our bodies have many parts and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body and we all belong to each other. In his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you're a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it Gladly, And we're going to stop right there. Paul mentions seven different things here in how that we can, can love and serve and minister uh, to people around us. I don't have to tell you that we live in a culture that is consumeristic. Where almost everybody has the philosophy, ask this question or some form of it, what's in it for me? What am I going to get out of this? How does it benefit me? It's a very self-centered, very self-serving perspective. And that attitude is, um, and that perspective is even in the church. And I believe that's why Paul said, don't think you are better than you really are. In the NIV it says, don't think more highly of yourselves than you ought. Some people are, are constantly moving from one church to another to, quote, get their needs met. Most Christians have an upside down view of church. They go to church to hear good preaching. I'm not saying that's wrong. 
But people hop around sometimes to find the place where they can hear good preaching. They go there to hear a good teacher, to follow a great leader, to be served, to be encouraged, or to be fed, or to get something. But Paul, Paul quotes these words of Jesus in Acts 20, 35, where he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. So we live in this consumeristic culture, and like I said, it's even kind of invaded the church in many ways. But Paul is talking, in the context here, he's talking about giving himself to help the weak. It's more blessed to give than to receive. A couple of weeks ago when I was preaching from Romans chapter 10, I asked this question, why is it? Why do you go to church? And I would say that if we go to church only to receive, then we're cheating ourselves of the blessings of God. If all we're doing here is coming to hear a sermon, if all we're doing is coming to get something for ourselves, then we're cheating ourselves. It's the same as if you went to work and uh, you just sat around the whole day and did absolutely nothing just to get a paycheck. I would say that that would only last so long and you would be out on the street looking for a new job. If it doesn't work in the work world, then it's not, it, it doesn't really fit and work here. The writer of Hebrews says in Hebrews 10, 24 and 25, let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching, capital D, the day. The end of days. The times tell us that we're getting closer and closer to the end of times, and whether you believe or agree with that, that's what the book tells us, and it gives us signs of when that day is gonna come, and, and so much of those signs, I don't believe that um, much else has to happen. We're, we're, we're in that time, we're in the end of the end of times. So we should come to church to give. Verse six says that in his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing things well, for doing certain things well. He has given each of us as a part of his body, he has given each of us as a part of his church a gift, something to do. We've been given gifts by God, not for our own personal use and enjoyment, but to serve, to help, to bless, and to minister to others. How many of you would agree and you found that it is much more blessed to give than to receive? There is a blessing in being a giver. There's a blessing in giving and ministering and blessing other people. We bless them for the health and the strength of, of the body of Christ in order that we all might honor and glorify God. So we're talking about God giving us gifts. And if I were to give you, say, a Reese's Outrageous candy bar, this this. I'm trying to see how many sermons I can preach using an outrageous candy bar. But see, Rod told me that he hasn't had one yet, right? Here you go, Rod. He's, he's asking where we can get it. Oh, just a little bit short. But see, that is a gift that I gave to Rod, and that is a gift that is meant to be kept for himself. He may share that with somebody just to give you a little bit of taste, but I would say, Rod, keep that for yourself. That is an amazing gift piece of candy and it and it, it it yeah it is I, I just can't describe it enough it's a great candy bar but it, when you give a gift like that that's something that's meant to be kept for yourself but the gifts that God gives us are not for us to keep and use only for ourselves they're intended to be shared for the benefit of the body of Christ listen to what Peter says it's kind of a parallel passage to what we read here in Romans chapter 12 1 Peter 4, 7 to 11. The end of the world is coming soon. The day, the big D, capital D day. Therefore be earnest and disciplined in your prayers. Most of all, most important of all, continue to show deep love for each other and love for love covers over a multitude of sins. Cheerfully share your home with those who need a meal or a place to stay. God has given each of you a gift from his variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Do you have the gift of speaking? Then speak as though God himself were speaking through you. 
Do you have the gift of helping others? Then do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies. Then everything you do will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. All glory and power to him forever and ever. Amen. So he's given us gifts. Each and every one of you in this room, God has given a gift. How many of you know that there's a gift that God has given you, something in your life, and you know this, what I have is a gift from God. Those gifts are varying. Paul mentions several of them in Romans chapter 12. He mentions several gifts in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We'll read a few verses there uh, at the end. He mentions it in 1 Peter chapter 4, Ephesians chapter 4. There's a, a long list of gifts that God has given us. What has he given you? So think about the, the abilities that he's given you. Think about the spiritual gifts. I mean, there's a whole variety of things. Each of us has something that God has given us in order to bless other people. Those are not gifts that we hold on to ourselves. This is why we go to church. This is why we're part of the church, so that we can use what God has given to us, so we can put it into practice. Listen, to be given a gift from God, intended to be used for serving and giving and blessing others, and to not use it, the Bible says, is sin. James 4, 17, remember, it is sin to know what you ought to do and then not do that. But when these gifts are used and shared with others in obedience to God, then there's blessing from him. Not only for the person who is serving or giving or being obedient, but for the entire church. And in the process, it tells us that God is honored, that he is glorified, and he is worshiped. And so when we use the gifts that God has given us to, um, to help other people, to bless other people, uh, when we use these gifts as he directs us, then we see Jesus in us, they will see Jesus in us, and, and they'll praise and give glory to God for the blessing and the help that they received. These are the words of Jesus. This is what he meant when he said in, in Matthew 5, 16, let your light so shine before others that they might see your, your good deeds that they might see the gifts that God has given you and glorify your Father in heaven. Going back to Romans chapter 12, verse four and five, he says, just as our bodies have many parts and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. We're many parts of one body and we all belong to each other. So when I read these verses, and that's why you have this puzzle piece in your hand, it reminds me of a jigsaw puzzle. So each of you have a piece of a puzzle right now. All pieces of one puzzle. We don't have all those pieces accounted for. I think we, we may have a few left over. And don't worry, we're not gonna put this puzzle together. <clears throat> We'd be here all night. Trying to do that would be a test, wouldn't it? But it makes me think of, of a puzzle. And, and life is like a puzzle. The great theologian, Forrest Gump, once said, life is like a box of chocolates. Mama said life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. But I'm going to tell you tonight that I think life is like a puzzle. We are part of that puzzle. The church is part of that puzzle. You know, going back to the beginning of all that we've experienced with COVID, you know that one year ago today was the last church service we held in here before we were um, shut down for 10 weeks. It was one year ago tonight was the last service that we held in this building before that shut down. In those first two weeks of the shelter in place that happened across America, jigsaw puzzles increased in sales 400%. They sold out in the stores. There was a, a, a puzzle company, Ravensburger Puzzles, based in Germany. And uh, that's what they said. The first two weeks, a 400% spike in sales. Some claimed that they were 10 times greater sales than normal. How many of you spent some time when you were spending more time at home? How many, honestly, you did puzzles at home, okay? Some of you may still be doing puzzles. I, how, many, how many just absolutely do not like puzzles besides Connie? Okay, <laughs> some of us just don't. It's an exercise that's just frustrating. 
But for some, it's relaxing. So there, it, it just shows us that we're all different. We all have a different view, a different perspective on this. Not every analogy is perfect, but this, this analogy of, of life being like a jigsaw puzzle. You see, Jesus taught with analogies. Jesus taught with parables. And this one seems to make sense to me. And I just want to make a few uh, correlations, and then we're going we're gonna to do a little bit of an exercise, and we're going to uh, call it a night. Puzzle pieces are a lot like people. So each of you has a piece of one puzzle. And if you want to know what this puzzle looks like, I think we've got the picture, the picture up there. This is, this is literally the picture of the puzzle that you have a piece to. So can you find your place in that picture? Okay, some of you are like eyeballing going, hey, this is me, You're, I'm, that, I'm that sunflower right there. Anybody got the pig snout? How many of you actually have an edge piece? Okay, there's only so many pieces in this, in this puzzle that are edges. There's, there's only four corner pieces. I wonder if somebody chose a corner. Anybody got a corner? We have one corner. Any other corners? Still up to be, all right, you're finding your place in this puzzle. Here's the thing. Puzzle pieces are a lot like people. We're, we're similar in so many ways. I mean, these are similar, and these are tiny little pieces to a puzzle. But at the same time, they're so very, very different. No two puzzle pieces in this puzzle. There's no two puzzle pieces I've ever done in all the puzzles that I've ever done that are the same. There's some that I could swear fit if it wasn't for the wrong, being the wrong color, you know? It's like it had all the right parts, but it just didn't fit. Puzzle pieces aren't, aren't designed to operate independently. Now, where this, where this analogy falls apart is we're not putting this puzzle together, but the reality is, is all the pieces of the puzzle that you have, they all go together. They all fit together to make one picture. And that's a great picture of the church. We're all pieces of one puzzle, and it takes every piece to make that picture work. We're not designed to be independent. We're part of a bigger picture. We're part of a bigger plan. Puzzle pieces aren't designed to serve themselves. Puzzle pieces are designed to be connected to another piece. They really only have meaning and purpose when they're part of that entire puzzle. When you finish the puzzle, how many of you have finished a puzzle only to find that there's one or two missing pieces? <laughs> Judy told me every puzzle is missing a piece or two. There's, there's really nothing more frustrating than, than spending time to put together a thousand piece puzzle to find out you're missing a piece or two. It's very, very frustrating. But when you finish it and those missing pieces, uh, it doesn't matter if it's a, it's a corner or an edge or an interior piece, that puzzle is incomplete. It's like a song that's missing the final note. How many of you have ever listened to a song and they didn't play the final note? It's, it's, it's like a Hallmark movie without a, without a kiss at the end. <laughs> Some of you don't find the humor in that at all. It's a lot of Hallmark that goes on at my house. And Pastor Austin, Jeannie told me that there is snow in the forecast. So, yeah, the, hear the uh, booze from the crowd here. The home, uh, snow's got to go with Hallmark movies too, so. Every, every piece of the puzzle matters. And when one piece is missing, that puzzle is not complete. I can't tell you how many times over the years I've cleaned our kids' toy closet. And as I'm cleaning up that closet, I find just like an errant piece of a puzzle. And honestly, it, it, it brings a lot of emotion out of me. I, I feel sad to find a piece of a puzzle. It's like, I don't even know where this goes. Like, what, what box is this supposed to go in? I'm thinking about all the other pieces that will never be complete because there's just one little puzzle piece. It's sad. And it's frustrating because I'm going, what am I going to do with this? I've got a piece of a puzzle. 
I can't throw it away. Well, I could, but that's sad. (laughs) When one piece is missing, when one is not there, it's just not the same. And the same is true of the church. When any of you, when any of us are missing, the church is not complete. You see, no piece is more or less important than any other. Every piece, every person has value. So I want you to take a minute and study the piece of the puzzle that I've given you. Some of you have already been figured. You find your place in the puzzle? You kind of got the general idea where you're going? Take a minute to study that piece. And if you're near someone, maybe take a look at, at, at their piece too. And, and what you're going to see is as you compare those pieces, you're going to realize what you already know is that your piece is very, very unique compared to everybody, everybody else's piece. You see, it takes all of us together. And we all, we all have a gift. We all have a responsibility. Let me just tell you a few, just a couple stories on a couple people. And I'm going to tell a story on my wife because um, this, this is her Sunday morning schedule. We have two grandsons that, uh, that she helps with because Marin will be here for the 11 o'clock to, to help lead worship. So Jeannie will come at 9 o'clock so she can catch the, the 8 o'clock church crowd leaving and the 9.30 church crowd coming so she can see all those people. And then she goes to Zach and Marin's house to watch the boys because Wells is probably napping during that time. And then she gets here in time for the 9.30 crowd to be leaving to see all those people and get the boys into uh, the early childhood. She's, she wants to be here so she can connect with, with people. There's value in being connected. Mary, Mary Hayes was telling me uh, this week that Ron's rule is he can't leave because they come to 8 o'clock service and he cannot leave until 9.30. Is that true, Ron? <laughs> it's true because you know what? He's, he sees all of his people at the 8 o'clock service and he's waiting to see who's going to be here for the 9.30 service because there's people that he just has to tease. There's people that he just has to reach out and connect with. That's, that's how we are meant to be as a church. And that's just the connectedness of, of people. Here's, here's, what I, here's what I think. If each and every one of us had five people in the church that we were looking out for like, like Ron does, if each of us would just take five, maybe 10, and say, you know what, I'm looking for those five or 10 people, and I'm gonna connect with as many of those people as I can, and the people that I don't connect with at church on Sunday, guess what, I'm gonna give them a call. If everybody were doing that, every single person every week would know and feel like they're connected to the part of the body. And you say, well, I don't even know five people. Well, that's your responsibility. That's your, that's your job. You meet and, and, and know five people. You might know the same five people that somebody else is going to know, but if you're always with the same five people, then your, your job is to find five new people outside of your circle of of normal people. And we just get more connected. Bob Stewart is a great connector of people. I'm sure there's several of you who have gotten together for a breakfast because Bob just has this ability to say, hey, you, 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 let's all get together and have breakfast. Let's all get together and have coffee. We've, got, we've all got gifts. Bob is an encourager. I mean, we all need to use whatever that gift is to the very best of our ability and with the strength and the power and the presence of God in our lives because we're part of a bigger plan. We're part of a bigger puzzle at all, and we all connect together. I'm saying as a church, we need to connect together. I'm trying to think of something to yell at you guys about tonight, and it's just like really, really hard for me. But this, this is such a practical message that I think this is the way that we need to do it. So puzzle pieces are like spiritual gifts. They're not designed to operate independently. They only have meaning when they're linked together with all the other puzzle pieces that make a whole picture. So I want to read for you as we close here, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians 12 talks about spiritual gifts, gifts of the Holy Spirit. 
But I want to go down to verse 12 in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and this isn't going to be on the screen for you, but I want you to just to listen because he talks in 1 Corinthians about the church being a body. He says, the human body has many parts, but the many parts make up one whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. Some of us are Jews, some are Gentiles, some are slaves, some are free. But we've all been baptized into one body by one spirit, and we all share the same spirit. Yes, the body has many different parts, not just one part. If the foot says, I'm not part of the body because I'm not a hand, that does not make it any less part of the body. And if the ear says, I'm not part of the body because I'm not an eye, would that make it any less part of the body? If the whole body were an eye, how would you hear? Or if your whole body were an ear, how would you smell anything? But our bodies have many parts, and God has put each part just where he wants it. God has put each part just where he wants it. How strange a body would be if it only had one part. Yes, there are many parts, but only one body. The eye can never say to the hand, I don't need you. The head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. In fact, some parts of the body that seem weakest and least important are actually the most necessary. And the parts we regard as less honorable honorable are those that we clothe with the greatest care. So we carefully protect those parts that should not be seen, while the more honorable parts do not require this special care. So God has put the body together such that extra honor and care are given to those parts that have less dignity. This makes for harmony among the members so that all the members care for each other. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. And if one part is honored, all the parts are glad. All of you together are Christ's body, and each of you is part of it. So I want to say to each of our baptism candidates, those who were baptized tonight, so glad that you're part of the family. Where's, where's Jessica? So thankful that you're part of the body. And this, I know this is your first time here. That just warms our hearts and so thankful that, you know, that we can realize that our church body is even bigger than what we might realize as we look around here. I don't know where you connect, where you feel like you connect. I don't know what your gift is. Maybe you're going, I don't have a gift. Listen, God has given each and every one of us a gift. That's what the scripture says. Think about your experiences. Think about what you're good at, what you've, what you've been able to learn about what, what, what can I do? Here's, here's what I know. Every single one of us in this room can serve in a nursery. Honestly, there may be a handful of people that just can't do that. But all of us could. And if all of us would, we would only get to serve there maybe once or twice in a whole year. Can I tell you that as we are open up uh, Sunday school and our Wednesday night programs, we need all kinds of help. And if all of us would do our part and just serve and, and connect in those ways, it would be such an easy job. And I want to say thank, thank you to New Hope. You, you're an amazing church, and we've never really struggled. I mean, there's times where we say we need, we need some more people in this area. We need people in that area. But you're faithful to step up and do those things. I just want to encourage you. And I know on a Sunday night we're speaking to the choir. But I just want to encourage you. Find that place to be connected, to be part of the body. You are a unique piece of the big puzzle. Don't ever let the enemy tell you you're insignificant, that you don't matter, that you can't do anything because you can't sing, you can't play an instrument, you can't teach a class. Listen, God has made us all different. Those puzzle pieces that you have are different shapes, different sizes, different colors, but all of that together makes an incredible picture. And I'm not saying that picture is so incredible, but all of it together makes a picture. There's a bigger plan. There's a bigger purpose, and you're all part of that. Why don't you stand with me tonight? I'm going to pray for you, and then I'm going to give you an assignment before you go. We're just going to kind of end abrupt tonight. I, uh, that's just how I feel led to do this tonight. Father, I thank you for each person that is here. I thank you for each person that is part of our church. I thank you, God, for the body of Christ and how you've given us so many different gifts and abilities. You've given us supernatural spiritual gifts, and all of those things are to be used not for ourselves, 
but they're meant to be used for others. I pray that you would enlighten us, show us ways that we can give and serve and bless and minister, no matter what that might be. I thank you for the many people who, who serve in cleaning these facilities done by volunteers. I thank you for all of those who serve that way. Thank you for the countless people who serve in our early childhood program and with our, with our children and with our youth. And God, I, I'm so excited for uh, us being able to get back into our normal routines that we've been missing for a year now. God, you've put us together. And I believe that you have others, God, that you are bringing into that picture, into that puzzle meant to be a significant part. And when one of us is missing, the picture is incomplete. So help us to see that our lives are significant. May your power be in us to serve in ways, God, beyond what we think or imagine. And may we truly be an accurate representation of your body, the church, in this community and around the world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. You're a part of that. I intended to uh, hand these out and I'm not gonna hand them out just for sake of time, but here is a list of all the ministries, places to serve in our church. This is before COVID happened. So some of these aren't even happening, but they won't be able to happen if there's not volunteers. I wanna encourage each of you to maybe take one of these.